Hey guys, what's up? This is Rocky Dirays and I'm back with another tutorial series. Uh, I'll be talking about functional programming in JavaScript. And as you can see all, already on my channel, you can see that I am a fanatic of JavaScript. And also lately there has been uh, a lot of buzz around this functional programming. So I thought, why not help my fellow JavaScript fans and JavaScript you know, followers to uh, have a healthy entry, uh, a happy entry into this uh, field of functional programming. So I won't be talking about uh, functional programming much because uh, I don't think it is the necessity over here. But I would like uh, for everyone to get started on functional programming directly right away. So I think uh, it will be better if I speak about what are the components of fun functional programming right from the start than talk about what functional programming is because uh, you must have done enough research by now that you're on my channel. Anyways, uh, if you haven't, you can google it up and you can see uh, any kind of two lines that will say that functional programming is all about functions and how you implement pure functions and all other kinds of stuff which can be briefed about on multiple sites. Anyways, uh, in this tutorial, I'll be directly focusing on pure functions and we'll talk about how and why they are used. And also, I'll uh, show you a demonstration, a quick one, about how uh, a pure function over here, this small one, uh, is better than uh, the function that isn't pure, which is considered to be impure. Anyways, uh, let's get started. Before I show you the demonstration, I also talk about uh, the pure functions, uh, the, the list of uh, qualities and attributes that uh, a pure function has, and I'll talk about uh, how these are uh, applied in the industry for better usage in a lot of uh, applications. Anyways, uh, I'm using JS Fiddle for this, so you can get uh, get on to jsfiddle.net and you can uh, start off uh, coding away. So it will it it is a pretty great platform if you don't know by now. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows it. So over here you have HTML, you have a JavaScript over here. You can write CSS code here and directly, oops, directly you can uh, see the output in the window given over here. So as you can see, welcome to functional programming in JavaScript, which I thought was mandatory since every tutorial covers it. Anyways, uh, let's get started. So uh, curl text is uh, the text I've given over here and uh, that I'm inserting through inner HTML. So I'm pretty sure you're probably uh, aware of JavaScript by now. So if you aren't, so I would suggest that you go back and learn JavaScript the ordinary programming, the basic programming and then get on to functional programming because that is pretty much required in today's uh, scenario. So object oriented programming is what is uh, used in general JavaScript so it is not completely pure uh, object oriented but yeah uh, JavaScript is, uh, is considered to be a functional language first but uh, it has the appearance of an object oriented programming because of its uh, close similarity with java which people again contest that it isn't so i personally think that a few elements uh, especially after the es6 like classes are similar to java so anyways a lot of people don't like that okay so enough talk about uh, javascript now let's get to pure functions so what pure functions are uh, essentially are uh, are as you can see they are functions which uh, one sec all right so pure functions are uh, uh, they they are passed uh, they and the functions which take in values and they give out output without changing the state of other global variables uh, uh, which give the same input and output uh, which give the same output I'm sorry for the uh, 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 same input so they are highly independent. So this independence uh, is uh, in independency is uh, pretty useful. So they can be reusable again and again, and that is why they are also called building blocks of code because you can pick up a function from a, a certain particular place and then you reuse it in another place irrespective of what it does because uh, uh, it it takes in a certain. Um, I'm sorry, uh, irrespective of whatever uh, value it has already taken. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, you can use a certain function like, let us say, uh, the multiplication by 2. So if you have a multiplication by 2 uh, on a as a mathematical function, uh, 
when you apply it to a number called 3 you always get 6 so it is always uh, the truth it is it is the fact it, it is always true so uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, give out 7 it doesn't give out 8 it always give out, gives out 6 so these kinds of functions are called pure functions and they don't uh, give out random values at random times so we have a lot of random uh, functions on uh, javascript build on the math.random or uh, uh, similar functions so instead of uh, uh, those are uh, impure functions and instead of using uh, those functions uh, uh, you it is it is a better practice uh, it is it is considered to be a better practice to be using pure functions so how are these helpful are uh, uh, you know, as i was saying we have outside variables and global states are not used over here so what i'm trying to say is that when you pass a function uh, you don't uh, rely on the machines outside state or you don't rely on the programs outside variables or you don't rely on any kinds of uh, variables which are not inside the function or passed by the user at the functions uh, when the function gets called. So also we have immutability that means that must not mutate the variables, uh, variables to pass to it. So what I'm trying to say is that if you pass a function called uh, 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 if you pass a function called multiply by 2 which takes in a variable called a and you uh, set the value of a as uh, 2 before fun uh, passing passing the uh, passing the variable to it so if you write the uh, function as uh, multiply by 2 so what it does is that it uh, it takes in the value of a and then multiplies it by 2 and returns it back to the computer to uh, produce the value to give the output so what happens in the process is that it should not uh, change the value of a but just give the value of a divided a, a multiplied by 2. So what I'm trying to say will be uh, clearly demonstrated below in the example in the example that I've uh, written over here. In the code that I've written over here will be working with that. So anyways uh, let's get uh, going. So we have no reliance on state or environment. Let's just run anyway. This is a pretty great advantage of using um, uh, pure functions. Because there is no reliance on state or environment, which means that it can run on any machine. So there is true interpretation. This is actually a true interpretation of mathematical term function. So functions on uh, programming uh, and functions in the mathematical world are pretty different. So the true interpretation of mathematical term function, uh, the function mathematical functions always take a certain value and give out the uh, exact same value again and again. The output is always matched with the input no matter how, how how many times you pass so it is a, it is actually the same uh, way how pure function function and lastly because we have independency as i was uh, talking about in the uh, third point over there we can use it for parallel processing and as we know parallel processing is a huge thing in the industry so we use parallel processing on research applications on running a lot of code we run uh, uh, codes which are uh, which take which keep taking a lot of uh, what do you call machine space or uh, a lot of time so uh, parallel processing requires a lot of pure functions and it is uh, pretty advantageous to, s to see that pure functions are uh, available in JavaScript so a lot of people don't know this so the functional programming starts off with using pure functions so let's uh, let's quickly tackle with a code over here which I've written let me uncomment it so i will see uh, let's see what happens first so i'll i'll get i'll i'll get the i'll get it going one second so let me run it first all right so as you can see we have two numbers over here 68 68 so there is a variable uh, called kit which is an object which has name of Jimmy, uh, name as jimmy lee and the age of his is 34 so we have written i have written uh, uh, two functions over here which act on this and uh, we can pass the function over here to the dom and which gets uh, attached to the html using this uh, piece of code so you can uh, you can see that there's a first one kit and this this is the function over here so as you can see i am uh, highlighting over here so just uh, wait for a minute so i'll explain the whole function right now so we have a function first func which takes an r object so this r object is a local variable or you can say it's just a, it's it's, a, it's an attribute <coughs> it's not a variable so over here we created a local variable called dub so dub what it does is it takes the value of 2 
and then the next uh, piece of code what it does is that our object dot age is transformed to our object dot age tw times two. So this is returned uh, using the uh, return command. So you return our object dot age, and that is how we print both the values. So what are getting printed over here is that document dot get element by id, which takes object as the uh, id, and then you know HTML is used to append it, append whatever value we want to the HTML. And then first function kit is the first function over here. I'll talk about the second function later. So first function is our let uh, what we call uh, it's our impure function. So I gave a comment over here. So uh, impure function and then first function kit plus plus is the concatenation. So I'm giving a space over here and then there's a kit dot age. So what kit dot age is that it is uh, uh, giving back the value of the object's age. So, what, so as you can see, we have 68 comma 68. So, what I'm trying to say is that we have the uh, output given by first from kit as well as we have the output of kit dot age. And astonishingly, it's not astonishing, but yeah, it is a bit uh, sad that both of these values are getting transformed. So, this is uh, kind of like a destructive testing, and if you if you come across uh, civil engineering, which I ha I have been involved with. So it's like a destructive uh, function because it is destroying the variables that we are passing and it is doing one uh, operation on it and destroying its value. So it is changing its value which is not, uh, uh, it's not uh, preferable by a lot of uh, projects and a lot of companies worldwide because they won't want to lose the data or you know get the data tweaked a lot of times. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, we can have a function which is a pure function over here which is a second function. So I'll give a comment again. So pure function what it does is that over here uh, how to make the same function a uh, pure is that you give this same r object as the attribute which uh, takes in uh, an object and then variable double is again two so as a, as we have given two over here it is working the same over here and then we return r object dot age times dub and this as you can see it is directly returning the value instead of assigning the value over here we have assigned the values uh, we have reassigned the value so instead of doing that it is, it is directly returning the age so let's see what happens if i change this with second func and uh, the object's name is kit so as you can see i have run it so you can see that it is uh, returning back the value of 68 which is what we want the function has to pass, uh, the function has to give the output uh, of twice the age of Jimmy Lee. So this guy's name is Jimmy Lee. So, and uh, uh, it's also giving the output of kit.age. So the actual age is also being shown over here. So as you can see, this is not an indestructible test or destructible function. So this is a pure function. So what it does is that it gives 68 followed by 34. 34 is its real age. So that is being stored here as it is. So guys, this is how uh, uh, two functions differ uh, based on purity. So one is impure and one is pure. So as we uh, as we have already seen, uh, pure functions don't have any side effects. They don't change any other states outside states. So they're the same output uh, for same input. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, no matter how many times we pass uh, the input of uh, 34 into this second func, it will always give the same value of 68 and uh, also it is highly independent so as you can see we have uh, independency so we have a variable double inside so it's not uh, depending on any other variables outside the uh, whole function bracket so also we have outside variables and global states are not used so we have seen that and reusable again and again so building blocks of code so what you can do is that you can take this function and copy paste it somewhere else but you cannot do the same with the first function because uh, you have uh, no, no, you can do that with the same function, but rather what happens is that in bigger functions where you are having a lot of dependencies, you can't uh, you can't directly use the function. So over here it is possible, but it is uh, kind of uh, it kind of changes the uh, data. But uh, in in a lot of projects that I've seen uh, uh, online, and when I've worked with a lot of people in the uh, previous uh, uh, projects which I which we have worked on, so what uh, what I have observed was that uh, it, it is preferred to use pure function and it is generally preferred to do functional programming so function uh, so as you can see um, what I was uh, trying uh, to say is that there is a uh, this is 
a lot of reusability when you have uh, pure functions and that is saved over here. Uh, so that is seen over here, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, uh, going ahead we have outside variables and global states are not used and immutability as I was already saying, it does not mutate the variables passed to it, which fails in the first function because it actually changes the variables. And there's no reliance on state or environment, it lets us run anywhere as I was already saying and then there, it is a true interpretation so guys uh, uh make sure that you uh you have understood this video so go through it again once again if you haven't because pure functions is, are pretty useful and pretty important in uh, creating uh, in in uh, involve, in getting involved with the functional programming and also uh, uh, uh get started with uh, js fiddle and follow my tutorials so that you can uh, work on certain functions and understand how they work and how you can write better functions how to make your functions pure and how to make your functions more functional than object oriented so also i would like to uh, say that uh, there are several books outside uh, which i refer to and which i read up to provide these tutorials so you can go ahead and take a copy i'll leave the descriptions below of what uh, books i think are the best and uh, go ahead and uh, 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 get a copy and also uh, to uh, uh, I, I uh, and also you can uh, and also you can support my uh, work and you can uh, contribute to my growth by liking my, my videos and subscribing to my channel, which I would highly appreciate. So please do that and also keep watching, stay tuned, and I'll be back with more tutorials on uh, functional programming and all other uh, kinds of. Uh, tutorials which you will which you can uh, stay tuned to and keep watching so guys uh, thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye